Hi everyone, so I'm back with another great off-campus opportunity and this one is with Okta. So if you don't know by now, Okta has been hiring aggressively for software engineers and right now they have two roles open for new grads and freshers as well. And I know a lot of you guys were asking me for 2026 grad opportunities and one of these roles are for 2026 grads as well. So they have two roles open. One is SRE, that is Site Reliability Engineering and then one is SDET or Software Engineering in Test. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to get your resume shortlisted. We're going to talk about the eligibility and I'm going to explain to you how you can ask for referral and the keywords that you need to put in your resume to make sure that it gets shortlisted. Because I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys asking me to explain how to put those keywords in the resume. So I'm going to explain that in today's video as well. So make sure that you watch this video till the end. Now, before we even start, let me tell you, Okta is a great company and they have a package of 13 LPA all the way till 20 LPA. And both of these roles are pretty great. A lot of people are thinking that the testing role is not good, but don't get confused. This is not a proper testing role. This is SDET, that is Software Engineering in Test. And for this, like I said, you have eligibility of 2026 grad as well. All right. And the other is SRE. That is also a pretty great role. And there's a lot of scope in this. Now talking about the eligibility, it says new grad. So for SRE, that means that if you've done your bachelor's in 2025 or before, then you are eligible for this. Now, they say bachelor's degree in computer science, but that also means related degrees. So if you've done BTEC with computer science, or if you've done a related degree like BCA, MCA, then that, then you're also eligible. Okay. So a lot of people ask me a question about this. So let me make it very clear. Now for this, it is 2025 and before. But in this, they have clearly mentioned 2026 grads are also allowed. Okay. So if you are enrolled in bachelor's degree in CS, then you are eligible for this. All right. So that is the eligibility. But still, if you guys have any doubt, then feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll be there to clarify it for you and we can have a discussion there. Now, let's get to the most important part that is getting your resume shortlisted. Now, usually I give you guys the keywords in the description box and I'll be giving you for this as well. And in that, plus we'll also be discussing a res referral template, right? So make sure that you watch it till the end. So I tell you guys to put these things in your resume, but a lot of you guys are confused. Okay, how do we put? And a lot of you guys are wondering, should we put all of these keywords? So of course not. You don't need to put all of these keywords and let me tell you how you can put them. Okay. So there are two sections where you can put these things. One is of course your skill section. So you can directly put it under your skills that you are skilled in, let's say tools, like Grafana, you are skilled with logging frameworks like Splunk, something like that. So when the skills, we can put it in the skills and then you have project section. Now, project section is the most important part of your resume. I've been telling that to you over and over again. And I really mean it. It is probably one of the most, most important thing, project section. And I feel a lot of people who don't get shortlisted is because your project section isn't strong enough, right? So how do you put these things in your resume? Just put them under your project section. Okay. So let's take anything. For example, let's take documentation. For example, how will you put documentation in your resume? You cannot just put it as a keyword in skills documentation, right? You have to put it in your project. So how will you do that? You can say something like he did the code and documented all the test cases along with testing or documented all the key features in the comments, something like that you can say, right? Or if you have anything else, like you have, let's say collaborative team. So, like, how do you put this keyword? If you have done a team project, you can put it there. Or if you've done any extracurricular activity, like a hackathon, or you've taken part in a team hackathon, you can put it there. Okay. So you have to make sure that you put these things somehow in your resume, but you don't need to put all of them. Don't take stress, put as much as you can. Okay. Try to put as much as you can. You don't need to put all. So here, try to put as much as you can. And of course, like I tell you guys, a great strategy is to learn and then put. A lot of people think, oh, I don't know this. I can, I cannot put this in my resume. No, you can learn it and then put, but you have to learn it. Okay. That is the most important thing. Do not put anything in your resume that you are not confident with. Okay. Now, likewise in SDT. So I've written a lot of things. Of course, all of these are not important. You can have one of these programming languages. So it is SDET. So you'll have software engineering as well here. Okay. And I'll probably bring this a bit down because I have a lot of things here. So I don't want you guys to be scared, right? I'll probably cut this down a bit. So these keywords you'll be able to see in the description box. Try to add as much as you can. And of course, SDT testing is important. So make sure that you add testing in your 
projects so you can easily say for any kind of project man you can just put test cases you can say integration testing unit testing api testing ui testing it is very easy as long as you've made a project you can say you've done testing for it just watch some videos about how to do testing how to do unit testing how to do integration testing it's very easy trust me so you can easily put these things in your resume whatever you're applying for make sure that you have the relevant keywords in your resume of course you don't need to have everything you can have as much as you can as much as you've learned or as much as your capability is and now let's come to the important part how to ask for referral so a lot of you guys have been asking me how to ask for referral so let's get it clear i will be making a complete video on this topic make sure that you tune for this but this is just a small template that i want to show you guys but don't worry i'll be making a complete end-to-end -end video about how to ask for referral just make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned for that so this is how you will be asking for referral and let me be very clear asking for referral or using a referral will increase your chances of getting shortlisted it will not make a very much drastic increase it won't be a very drastic change but it will surely increase your chances taking a referral is always better than applying directly remember that so you can find many people of the employee of the company for example octa people you can just search on linkedin and you know just search for octa people you'll find a lot of people so this is how you have to start very short and simple hi and then employee name so i missed that but you also should put hi employee name so that they know right ki who you're messaging so hi employee name i am xyz i am an undergrad at this com at this college if you're working at a company you can say i am working at this company i am looking to join your firm or your company for this position and then please mention the role id and the job id and you can even give the link to the opening okay then comes the most important part your skills i have experience working with and then put all the languages and tech stacks so don't put every single thing right put the most relevant things that match with the job id or that are relevant for this role so you can say i have experience working with react js node js and have worked with these tech stacks and javascript python etc and have x factor now what is this x factor this x factor is basically something that showcases your achievement so i believe everyone should have one x factor whether it is an open source whether it is hackathon internship dsa problem solving you need to have one x factor that sets you apart from everyone else so if you've done gsoc write it if you've done internship in a pretty good company or even a decent startup put it if you have done a lot of problems in dsa put it if you have a good rating put it okay so i've repeated internship but i meant to say hackathon if you've taken part in a hackathon and you have come let's say in top five top three put it so your x factor is going to be very important and then say attaching my resume if you find it suitable i would be grateful if you can refer me for this opportunity now when i say attaching my resume do not attach it as a pdf give a drive link like every time i see people give sending me their resume with pdf i do not like it and trust me nobody is going to download your resume and then find it their system and then open it it's very simple just please upload your resume on drive make it public and then send the drive link it is very essential okay it's going to be very important it makes a huge difference trust me i know because i have had a lot of people ask me for referral i've had a lot of people ask my friends for referral and this does make a lot of difference okay so you can use this referral template you can use these keywords both of them i'll put in the description box and these are the links the links also i'll put in the description box so if you still have any doubt feel free to ask me in the comments and make sure that you subscribe to the channel you'll be seeing a lot more off campus opportunities more than you'll be able to count any time there's off campus opportunity you'll see it on the channel so make sure that you subscribe to it and watch out for more videos